Hello everyone, welcome to Fireside Chat with Shafali season two. As we all know, year 2022 marks the 70th anniversary of the India-Japan diplomatic relationship establishment. IJBC is celebrating this momentous year by hosting a series of events that includes business sessions, lectures, cultural programs, and more. Let us work together to forge a vibrant India-Japan relationship for future generations. For more details, please visit our official website www.ijbc.org. So today I'm having uh, another special guest, Drishti Tandale. Why she is special? Because uh, she's having a lot of experience in Japanese language. Not only that, I'll tell you her introduction and you will get to know. Never having visited Japan, Mumbai-based singer, songwriter, and music producer she is, who goes by the alias Drishti, Drishti yep. writes song in Japanese. Having been influenced by the many facets of Japanese culture, she aspires to spread her love for Japan through her self-produced animated music videos. Her most well-known single convenience store earned a feature on the Rolling Stone India website. She was introduced in interviewed by a Japanese blogger for Acha India. Wow. A blog about indie musicians. She was also a guest on popular indie music podcast Made in India's Ladies special episode in 2021. Trishti is a self-taught Japanese learner and intends to continue learning firsthand in Japan soon. So now you all must know why she's special. So welcome Trishti to Fireside Chat with Shafali. Thank you. Hi. It's a pleasure meeting you actually. And uh, it was just I was going through uh, several profiles where I can find a uh, a correct one for the interview session right. uh, who is actually into Japan, Japanese culture or uh, a Japanese person to India or Indian culture. And I found you there. So it's my pleasure to connect with you. Oh, it's an honor to be on this. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, we heard a lot of time, Drashti, that, uh, you know, lot of people learn Japanese language, they go for interpretation, they learn for, uh, you know, watching manga or uh, uh, animation, reading manga and, and animations. So, but uh, writing songs, it's, it's really very difficult because you have to write and you are, you are also a singer. It's a double complicated thing, <laughs> first writing, uh, then singing also. So why means how you got interested in not only in Japanese. Uh, okay, I'll just divide these two questions. Sure. How you got interested in Japanese language first? Okay, um, so I think it started with um, me wanting to know more about the culture in general. I, I started to learn things about Japan when I was 15 and um, it was all very new because not a lot of people are familiar with the Japanese culture or language here especially so I I got really intrigued by it and the language sounded extremely beautiful to me so I thought I I decided I wanted to learn the language and it started from there and I started to eat a lot of Japanese food and uh, read Japanese books, um, as in like Japanese culture related books. And I, I watched a lot of anime. <laughs> and yeah, I just started from there. And um, I, I started learning the language in 2016. And yeah, I think it's, it's been a while since then um yeah pretty much so when, when you started learning in uh, japanese language how you felt because um, 
most of the time what happens that some of the language is pretty but japanese is something very very difficult so your uh, you know uh, excitement for uh, knowing japanese culture and learning still japanese language was it same or you landed some other uh, thought that oh <laughs> what i have chosen well um that happened when i looked at kanji <laughs> um but um i was intimidated by it but the moment i started uh, practicing i i'm a self learner so i just started writing kanji in all my notebooks and started with hiragana and katakana and stuff um and it it was sort of an escape from me uh, for me from you know everything else so it was a lot of fun in fact more than daunting i i enjoyed learning all the the, the scripts uh, of uh, japanese and yeah it, it was more fun than feeling like it was complicated or scary and it it just excited me more that um that there are things that i don't know and i want to learn more um uh, more japanese so yeah <laughs> so till date you are a self learner yes wow so it's going to be really inspiring for students so think that self learning won't do because it's a very difficult language and see here you are an example that you learn japanese language not hard language and also singing that yeah yeah for sure so uh sometimes it happens that uh, uh when we learn japanese language even in institute uh taking our regular classes it happens that we we try to get uh, you know this circle friend circle where we can uh, share the things uh, okay what's going on what's uh, uh, is this the correct pronunciation or what's the meaning of this thing you know uh, group study we do but what happened in your case because you were not you were a self learner you were not taking any classes true, true. so so uh, what, how you manage that thing hmm, because that when we learn with question. someone it yeah when we learn with someone it helps us a lot to sure. know whether we are right or wrong yeah so how you manage that situation hmm um it was quite slow for me to pick up um the phrases or like you know basic phrases and try and speak the language it was scary to speak because i don't know i didn't know if i was wrong or right and if i'm pronouncing things correct um but i think i just watched a lot of media in japanese so that helped me to pick up the correct pronunciation and if i felt like i was wrong or not sure about a certain word or something i just go look it up um, you know um, on on like jisho.org and um, and just like watch a lot of anime and and movies and tv shows in japanese to sort of you know imbibe it in into my system so yeah and uh, some people also say that uh, if you are learning japanese language and uh, it's good to be uh, seeing anime but if you are learning watching animation it's not it's not going to be the good means uh, formal or a very good framing of language is that it helped you to learn japanese language uh yes yes it did that is a good question and there's a lot of debate online about you know learning japanese through anime um and i i think it depends on yourself if you 
if you're aware of the phrases that you're not supposed to use in daily life, then it's all right because it was it was the case for me. So I knew that these were certain words that are not used in real life because I did my separate research. If you're going to just learn Japanese through anime and not do research or studies otherwise, then that would be a different case and they would pick up all the, you know, um, sort of super informal and rude, um, you know, phrases. But um, if you do your study um, on the side and you you know what, what you're listening to and what you should pick up and not pick up, I think that's all right. And, and a lot of people do say, you know, don't learn Japanese from anime at all. But I think that's, I think that's a bit too much to say because um, I've learned so much from anime, like not just, not just phrases, but picking up certain vocab that might be, you know, um, N2 level or N1 level. And it helped me in my exam as well, because I look at a word and I said, okay, this is something from that anime that I watched and now I know it. So it helped in that way. And somewhere it also helped in, uh, in listening. Definitely. Uh, yeah. It's a great uh, listening skill development thing. Yeah. Because in JLPT, the listening part is sometimes really <laughs> <laughs> problematic and you do yeah. have a good listening part. Yeah, that's true. I think, I think, I, I could say that, yes. <laughs> so coming to your uh, career in music, how you got into that? Were you interested in music the, uh, before Japanese, uh, opting for Japanese language or it comes after that? Um, yeah, music came before uh, learning Japanese, uh, way before so I started learning the guitar initially, but I soon realized that I'm more suited to singing. So I, I started learning vocals uh, professionally. And then I, I enrolled into KM uh, Conservatory um, in 2018. So, yeah, and... and um, as soon as, as as soon as I started learning Japanese, I knew I wanted to write songs in Japanese one day. So I I think that was somewhere in the back of my mind as well when I started learning, and that sort of drove me to learn more. And that was that was quite quite uh, you know an incentive for me to learn the language. So. And uh, while learning vocal means uh, I I really don't know about that, but. Um, is it different or difficult if you're learning that thing in uh, that thing for Hindi, hmm. uh, for English, and for language like Japanese? Definitely, I would say it's very different, and it's not. It's it's easy to sort of you know, um, not see the small thin fine line between the three or the two um and the techniques are different for sure it's it's very different for of course hindustani music and western music and um i mostly uh, did my major in western vocals so it's 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 very different from you know the projection that you might need for singing in japanese or in korean or any other language and um it's I think I think for me it was it was quite quite the self-discovery so I I had to listen to a lot of Japanese music more than had to I, I loved listening to Japanese music so I think I picked it up from there and just you know subconsciously I I sort of knew what technique or or like what what uh, you know, how much I should open my mouth to sing certain words or, you know, certain phrases. And that's that's pretty much how I did it. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, okay, uh, learning the vocals and uh, then I 
uh, in your profile it was mentioned that you are you are also a music producer but just now you said you <laughs> you realized that you want to be in vocal while learning guitar so what makes you to turn as a mu- music producer as well hmm um so before joining km uh, conservatory i i had no clue about production and i it scared me to be honest and i did not think that i'd ever land up producing music but in my second year um at km i developed an interest for it and i thought that this is something i want to learn and since it's quite important to be self reliant in the music industry i thought might as well <laughs> and and it was quite fun and it was a similar process as you know learning japanese for me because it was a self discovery and self learning or you know a sort of situation and i thought okay if i can produce music then i can produce it myself in a certain way and then sing japanese vocals on top of it and since it's a very niche thing to do um not a lot of people might realize how i might want the music to sound or be for japanese lyrics so it was up to me to like learn myself and you know figure it out so that i can match the music and the lyrics so learning music uh, also helped you to produce your own songs the way Definitely. you wanted because japanese language is not so uh into minds of indian people yes <laughs> they can really do good with hindi and with uh, english yes. but japanese is something different true true so what uh, which was your first song um the first song that i have released um it's called convenience store and it's about it's it's a super simple concept i i am actually uh, very interested in baking and cooking as well so you know being trapped at home during the lockdown i wanted to you know sort of create something that was very peaceful and relaxing um and i thought okay i could go with something to do with baking and i i just started to um you know um produce it starting um with guitar and then i built up on top of that and i i just wrote the song in in a day or two and that was that was it and then and then i produced on top of it and and then yeah it's been two years actually since the song and it was i released it on 16th august wow so, yeah <laughs> 2020 yeah it's been almost two years so uh, okay so uh, song from song writing to uh, music it was all given by you for that yes. song yes and uh, if i'm not wrong the animation part was also done by you yes <laughs> so again it's it's something really very different and animation is not so easy to do <laughs> so how you manage that again it was a self discovery situation <laughs> and um i've always wanted to learn digital art so i um you know i just took it upon myself i downloaded this uh, this uh, free application for digital art and i i started using just my trackpad to draw which was very difficult and and tiring on the hands but um yeah um it it i i since i've always wanted to learn it it was it was you know a fun process and um, i wanted to so another reason i wanted to learn it was so that i can um provide visuals for my songs since it's in japanese i thought there might be people who won't understand what i'm trying to do or what won't understand what the song means of course so i thought what better than to you know have visuals so you have the visuals and the audio and you know it's a perfect sort of um audio visual combination which is you know something that i think is quite necessary because without the visuals 
the audio will, you know it's it's up to your perception as how you want to take it or it's you know uh, visuals without the audio is up to you how you want to interpret it but then again it's it's up to you to interpret anything but once the audio visuals are together it's a, a whole different world and you can you know i i thought i would be able to provide the visuals and have have it a bit clear as to what i'm trying to communicate to the viewers and that's that's pretty much it yeah so today i am with a very multi talented person who who if she wants anything uh, you know to give to audience she might learn that whole process <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> means learning japanese language and then writing in that and then music production and ultimately the animation all together everything is very different and very difficult actually as far as far as um, i'm concerned because i tried my hands in animation but i failed actually okay. maybe sometime later getting inspired from you <laughs> i i start once again definitely <laughs> so um how much uh, time it took the whole process uh, means uh, start from writing the song and uh, then doing the uh, singing work and then music production and then then uh, animation work so how much time you took all together to produce the mm-hmm. first song actually um so this is funny because my first song took me a month everything included the writing production recording making the video editing the video you know editing everything together and uploading it took me a month but as compared to that my songs in the that i released in the future after that took me way longer than convenience to it yeah definitely but one month is definitely a very short period if you are still a learner in some of true, the things true. or the most of the things actually but uh, yeah it may be happened that uh, that was the initial or the first one and you were like okay this thing comes out really good but in your other song it happened that oh no i need some more modification in that okay yeah. this thing is not coming good so i need some more time to fix it so True. it may be the reason that you took a long in that process yes, afterwards yes. <laughs> so i must um, must say that uh, that uh, the afterwards songs of yours must be having a more polished or cleaner uh, version True. of True. Uh, songs actually true that's true so total how many songs you have released in japanese till date i have released four songs in total yeah so uh, what were uh, the other projects you were uh, having like uh, uh, that was the convenience store and uh, the other songs were related to if you can uh, if you can share yeah for sure um so actually the first song i released was as a feature and it was uh, it was the song called blood flow and um it it was a collaboration with me and uh, one of my batchmates from km actually most of my other songs are collaborations with other artists and music producers so um the first one was blood flow and um and the the one after convenience store is called let's escape um that was with a friend of mine who's a producer and guitarist so um that was quite a fun process it was it was probably the longest that i've worked on a song but um it the 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 result was quite quite a good one so i was happy with that and um the other one uh the the fourth song is called portal and it was with another batchmate called couple um and he's also a music producer so he produced the song and i uh provided lyrics and vocals for that one 
and a little bit of drawing for <laughs> that one as well. And Let's Escape was also uh, animated by me. Wow. So all, all your collaborations were into uh, in this field only means uh, they are interested in Japanese uh, uh, songs or Japanese language or they were from other uh, field uh, like Hindi or uh, Western songs. Uh, oh, you mean the collaborators? Yes, yes, collaborators. Um, I I think they they just wanted um like some different vocals probably, and I think they all watch anime if I'm not wrong. <laughs> so and it's like a it's something that's just picking up lately, and everyone's you know watching anime. So you know, and since Japanese singing is a bit of a niche you know, in, in India, I, I think it was, it was, you know, something unique for, for all of us. So to sort of collaborate together. And uh, uh, while going through your profile, I've seen that uh, you performed uh, on stage as well, if I'm not wrong. So how was uh, the experience and uh, what was the feedback from the crowd? Um, I actually haven't performed any of my Japanese songs live. Oh. <laughs> in front of an audience. I have okay. performed uh, Let's Escape on the Made in India podcast. Um, okay. Last year. Last year? No, in 2021. Yeah. So, yeah, I actually haven't performed any of my Japanese songs since I started writing them in the lockdown. I did not really get the opportunity to perform them live in front of an audience, but I do hope to I, I do hope to do that very soon. Sure. So how was uh, the podcast experience? The podcast at Made in India was really cool. It was it was quite surreal because I haven't done anything like that before, and it was it was probably one of the first times that I stepped out after the lockdown. So it was, it was like, you know, this whole surreal experience for me and meeting so many warm people uh, in one day was, was amazing. And May, the, the, you know, uh, May Mariam, she was so warm and so amazing. And it was, it was honestly great to, to have a conversation with her. Sure. And uh, coming to your, uh, coming to other as aspects now. So uh, are you looking forward for uh, uh, collaborators from Japan or uh, or people who are into music? Yeah, for sure. That would be great. <laughs> so have you tried, tried for that? Um, well, not really, since I have actually been really, you know, busy with studying for uh, my Japanese exams. Um, I've sort of put music on a little bit of a pedestal for now, um, so that I could focus on my Japanese. And um, I have my college interview in November for college in Japan. Wow. So, yeah, I. I'm just I've just been working on that and I haven't really gotten much time to focus on a lot of music that I had actually been working on before all of this. All the best for uh, your interview in November for Thank you so Japanese much. college. Thank so you. it's it's related to uh, music once again or yes. a Japanese language learning. It's it's related to music. So it's um it's sound engineering course in uh, at Toho Gakuen College um, in Tokyo. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So now I can uh, really ask about this process as, as well for, uh, uh, you know, taking admission in Japan and uh, especially in music. So, because it, it's going to be uh, very helpful for the students who is watching this interview or going to watch this interview. Definitely. Uh, what was the procedures you follow 
to uh, you know get the admission i'm i'm sure you are uh, you are at the initial stage right now you have to give your interview but selecting process the uh, getting the admission so it will help all the audience or the aspiring students who really don't know about the music in japan hmm so um again it was quite a difficult process because there aren't many people who decide to go to japan to study music <laughs> so um it it was quite quite a uh quite a process for me to figure everything out uh myself and i i took a lot of time to do a lot of research and figure out you know the perfect college or um you know figure out what are their eligibility uh, requirements and you know all the details and the administrative stuff so it was quite quite a long uh, process to figure out all of that before i could even email them and you know inquire about admission so i would say if there is anyone who is planning to go to japan to study not just music but in general um preparing well in advance is like is is not a bad idea at all because it it did take me a lot of time and in fact i i did give my n2 this july but if i had given it last year in december or in july then i might have already been in japan as of now um you know i would have been doing this academic year and the next but since i was late in giving my jlpt and um and also the eju and bjt which are the other proficiency exams which i'll be giving in september and november um if i knew about them i would have given it earlier but then again i wasn't really prepared for it so preparing well in advance and giving all of your getting all of the proficiency exams out of the way is a great idea because then you can focus on the major that you're actually you know going to be start going to be studying in and you know it it helps to sort of have some time to relax and figure out you know the japanese uh language you know the the vocab and the phrases that you might be uh, that that will be really helpful for your major and you know your area uh, of of uh, ex- you know uh, of uh, your your field so yeah since since there aren't a lot of people who are familiar about you know japan in general it's hard to find people who know about japanese ad- admission in, into colleges there so it's it's um uh, it's i think it's quite important to prepare at least a year in advance and and then slowly figure out the admission process and do your a uh, practice of you know in your field side by side so if if i could go back in time then i would have done that <laughs> because um i'm i'm not really finding the time to focus on music right now and it's just been japanese learning for the past few months so uh n2 level jlpt n2 level was a man- is a mandate there for yes if i'll say yes wow the n2 or n1 <laughs> oh. and uh, beside that they also take uh, some proficiency examination at their end or uh, only this uh, certification uh, means jlpt exam hmm. works so if you have given a proficiency exam uh, like jlpt or bjt or eju then you are eligible for the for admission but if you haven't then they do give you an option of uh taking their college exam so which is sort of like their own proficiency exam so okay. that is one option 
<laughs> yeah but still it's uh, it's really commendable that you did all the research work and now you are at the stage where you are going to uh, you know live that dream actually and i'm <laughs> sure so. and i'm i'm <laughs> just praying for you if you really Thank want you. to go it will definitely happen Thank you so much. In fact, uh, on behalf of IGBC also, we are praying for that for oh, you. Thank you <laughs> for your future. It means a lot. <laughs> so, um, okay, from past few months, you are really, really busy with uh, your Japanese language and uh, somewhere with music as well. But if you get some time, if Drishti get some time, what she did in her, uh, you know, free time? Sorry, I I lost you a bit there again. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was asking that uh, uh, when Drishti get some time, some free time, what she do? Oh, uh, um, apart from music or. <laughs> Up, uh, yes, apart from music, apart from her Japanese language. Hmm. Apart from that, I I like to um, cook and bake. So I'll just you know Google up some recipes and and try them out and and you know bake some cakes or or cookies or something like that. So yeah, and. and i i'm not much of a much of an extrovert so i like staying at home and you know maybe reading or or you know making making a coffee for myself or just you know um cooking for myself but yeah <laughs> yeah uh, most of the people uh, who are introvert they really like to stay at home enjoy sure. their own company which people don't understand extrovert people don't understand yeah. that <laughs> so okay we are on same page <laughs> okay great and it's actually okay, um, so, there is there's been some research that introverts are smarter than extroverts so definitely <laughs> <laughs> yeah they uh, they uh, that researchers are really you know very intelligent people for sure <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, once you go to japan i know this uh, it's it's uh, really much before to ask but have you listed some of the things which you're going to do in japan and uh, would enjoy there explore or something hmm. like that uh yeah for sure there are so many places that i'd love to go um i i'm really bad at names so i can't remember all of the places but um there are so many cafes and restaurants that i want to go and try out and um you know try you know amazing sushi and ramen and and like you know um you know japanese beverages like you know amazing matcha lattes at starbucks or whatever and and you know all of their convenience stores <laughs> look you know look really amazing with like uh, you know these cute little snacks and like anime themed snacks and stuff like that so i think more than more than going around and and of course i really want to do that and and i i really look forward to you know um just traveling alone and just you know taking in the whole experience and and um, you know visiting several different places in japan i i really have been wanting to do that for so many years now and um, there's that and but more than more than that i think i'm more excited for the food <laughs> yeah actually i was supposed to go to japan in 2020 in uh, april 2020 but then the lockdown hit so i was not able to go that stupid corona came in yeah. our life yeah <laughs> so uh, okay so any funny incident happened with drishti when she 
uh, was writing her song or producing a music in Japanese language. Yes, actually, there's there's one thing that comes up to mind. Um, so while writing convenience store, I I made a mistake of not um, you know having it looked over by a Japanese person or like you know maybe some someone who's been studying Japanese for a while. So I did not get that you know proofread or whatever. And um, there was one grammatical error in the song, and I released it as it was, <laughs> and I didn't know. I didn't know at all. I I completely overlooked it, and I just released it. <laughs> and then, um, uh, so it was this line, "Wasure um, mono wa inai no." So it's it means, uh, you know. Uh, have you not forgotten anything at the convenience store that you forgot to buy? So I meant to say that, but I used the wrong um, the wrong word for, you know, for is there anything? So it's actually the word that I used was for living beings and not for non-living things. <laughs> So actually, this was pointed out way in the future. Um, the the blogger of Acha India, the the Japanese blogger, he was the one who pointed it out to me, and I had no clue up until then. And he told me, and he asked me if whether that was intentional, and I said no, I had no clue at all. <laughs> so he said he said it's actually a bit cute because it seems like. It seems like the eggs and butter and flour are your friends, and you're, you know, thinking that that they're, they're living people that you've forgotten at the convenience store. So I was like, okay, sure, that makes perfect <laughs> sense. <laughs> yeah. So it turned in a good way, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, before I wrap up this uh, interview, it was really nice talking to you. But I would like to know, um, as a Japanese language learner, songwriter, music producer, and also into animation, which is very famous in Japan, and Japanese are way good in animation. Uh, sure. Would you like to say anything from our platform to students, the aspiring ones in music? in learning language, in animation, anything would you like to say to them? Mm, for sure. Um, so since, again, since a, not a lot of people are aware of Japanese culture and language in India, it's hard for them to understand what somebody is doing if they're interested in the language or the culture so i faced that as well and it's it's difficult to explain to them you know what it is that i'm doing and and why it's important to me so if there is anyone who's facing you know such difficulties and trying to explain it to anybody uh, as to what they're doing or you know facing difficulties and you know not having anyone to talk to about it or like not not uh, having no one understand what exactly uh, you're trying to achieve um i would say just focus on what you're doing and don't give up at all once you give up then you know that's it you you won't know what the future might have in store for you so i would say don't give up at all no matter who says what and you know what's happening inside your head um, just try and put that aside and just work on your stuff and believe in yourself and just believe in what you're doing more than anything else and I think that's the most important thing is just believing in yourself that belief will take you far is it's that's that's what that's what has helped me you know overcome a lot of doubt about taking this up and you know pursuing this so I've come to a point where you know people do understand because I have I have explained it to them and um, 
you know now it's it's sort of picking up in india as well so i have come to that point but for somebody who's at the initial stage of like you know maybe i want to learn japanese totally do it because it's it's a wonderful language and the people in japan are you know they seem amazing and they you know you know everything in japan seems like like a dream so, so <laughs> you know if you want to go to japan and just as a tourist you know even learning the language you know it it it's it's not such a bad idea so i think just yeah stick to your gut and you know just stick to what you're doing and forget the rest <laughs> true because i have uh, and lot of people from different backgrounds uh, i don't know what uh, make them to learn japanese language maybe they went to japan as a tourist or uh, they attended some conference among uh, japanese people and they started liking japanese language and they started learning japanese language and beside coming from different background altogether they uh, you know totally transformed their whole career and now yeah. what they are doing is totally different and they enjoying it yeah they are really it's like they are living a dream life what they dreamt of before That's learning definitely. japanese language yeah so also uh, whoever is listening who all are going to listen this interview also one thing that learning japanese language is not only about interpretation or translation oh, or going sure, to sure. uh, you know going in it sector it's it's way <laughs> too much means you yeah. can go anywhere with this language so yeah. not only with a japanese language but with any other language because sure. that's a common Uh, uh misconception people is having people are having uh learning language it's just a part time job or uh, you know doing interpretation or translation but definitely you can transform your whole career so uh so before true. leaving uh <laughs> before leaving one thing more uh, do you have anything which you want to share with the platform of ijbc to your audience um well <laughs> um well i will be your audience okay <laughs> sure <laughs> um um i will be releasing music in the future i guess so you know any support is welcome and i i appreciate if anyone listens to my music so thank you <laughs> definitely people will going to listen your song and uh, especially who have not listened your convenience store it's it's going to hit the likes a lot now <laughs> after what i hope i really wish i hope so too <laughs> and Thank definitely so we will want to see um, drishti after you know completing her uh graduation or post graduation whatever you are going to do in japan so we really wish you get the chance and uh, all the best for that and we want Thanks to listen so once again your songs in japanese language so that was drishti pandeel a singer and strong songwriter in japanese language who bridges a gap between india and japan through her music as music no no boundary So with this episode, I'm closing today. Yes, I uh, promise to bring once again a lot new and unknown people who are hero in their field. So don't forget to visit our website www.ijbc.org for more details on our upcoming events. Also, don't forget to subscribe our IJBC official YouTube channel. Thank you. Konnichiwa. Namaste.